name's Steve Sheldon. I'm president of Rainbow Records, established in 1939, and I've been doing this for 40 years. Through the years, we've made pretty much any artist you can name. We've done Sinatra, the Beach Boys, the Beatles. We were pretty big through the rap years, so Dr. Dre, Snoop came through here. CDs came about in the early 80s and pretty much wiped out vinyl. We are down from making 60,000 a day to maybe 20, 25,000 records a week. Vinyl started coming back in the early 90s, just slowly. And then about three years ago, we saw a big jump. And we're back to making around 20 to 25,000 records a day, typically five to six days a week. Making records has pretty much been the same for as long as I've been doing it. The first step is you do your recording and you get your master that you're happy with. You cut the lacquers. From that lacquer, we spray it with silver to make it conductive to electricity because it's an electroplating process from that point on. These are electroplating tanks. These are nickel anodes. It's a corrosive solution. It's constantly breaking down the nickel. So what you have here is a bath of metal, basically. And then you've got your current, your positive and your negative, and it pulls the nickel to it, and we put a separator on it called dichromate, which allows us to separate the two parts. We take that lacquer, which is a positive, and we pull off a negative called a master, and then from that master we make a mother, which is a positive, and from that positive we make a stamper, which is a negative, and from that negative we make the record, which is a positive. All the positives can be played, and we do play them to check them during the process. PVC, polyvinyl chloride, that's pelletized and made, formulated for records. We mold the product. You got a piece of vinyl that looks like a hockey puck, and then the record press is a system of hydraulics. The record mold that's holding the stamper is a steel block with channels in it where the steam runs through to heat up the mold, and then the vinyl goes in, gets lined up with a center pin with the two labels, and then it goes under about 1,800 pounds of pressure closes and then the steam shuts off and a water valve opens and allows water to go through those same channels that then cools off the record. Once it's cooled, it's carried out by the flash, the excess that's pressed out, and then it's trimmed. If you've never seen this done, it's kind of like making waffles. We'll handle a job from any point. We'll design the cover if a client wants, or they can send us in their own design. We have an in-house print shop, and back here we print all our record labels. We print two colors at a time, and then we, if it's a four-color label, then we run it through twice. Then we drill the center hole on the label, and then the label goes into the punch. The thing that always was attractive to vinyl, even when it was only vinyl, is the artwork on the cover. Um, you know, a CD, you're just getting a little 5x5 five five square, and here you're getting a 12x12 12 12 piece of artwork. It can take six months to a year to have a good press operator for pressing vinyl. It's a lot of training to get somebody to understand pressing a record. It's really a craft. There's 10 pressing plants in the country. There's really no such thing as a new record press, and it wouldn't be cost-effective to try to develop a new record press. So we're all pretty busy. I always thought we'd be pressing records, but if you asked me 10 years ago, I never would have guessed we'd be pressing as many again as we are today.